Good morning. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Just in case you've been missing that. Uh, welcome to everyone. Uh, if you're online or if you're here in person, we're glad to see everyone again. Uh, just to go through uh, some of the announcements, some of the things that we're doing here. Uh, we're glad to see everyone uh, spacing out like you are, uh, not being lost, but spacing out with your, your things. So if you're here and you want to wave at other people, make sure you wave at them now. Uh, because after uh, the service, we are going to usher you out after the service then as well. And you can take your bulletin with you, then we kind of have an idea of where, where people sat then as well. There's a recycle bin under the table back there, or you can take your bulletin with you again. Uh, so after uh, the, the last verse of I Know That My Redeemer Lives, make sure you stay where you're at. We're going to start with the rear and usher them out first. So that way we're not going past everybody and closer than six feet, a little bit less anyway. So make sure you do that. And then once you are ushered out, go ahead and go outside then if you can. Uh, you, you may check your mailbox, but not everybody all at once, uh, you know. So make sure we are, are thinking about that. So that uh, announcement is there after the last hymn then as well. Um, and you're, you're more than welcome to uh, stay outside and uh, chat with other, each other out there. And if you notice, we've got some flowers up here in the front of the church as well. Uh, kind of gets you uh, celebrating again here as well for uh, being back together, having spring, and all kinds of other things. So uh, we don't know when we'll start up uh, with Sunday morning classes and things like that, but we're just happy to have uh, worship here again with you. So uh, make sure uh, you sing out. Uh, I don't know if you've heard that story before about the guy that sings a little bit off key but sings extra loud because it says make a joyful noise to the Lord. It doesn't say only sing loud if you can sing on key and have a really pretty voice. So make a joyful noise to the Lord this day with all of our Easter hymns then as well. So sing out nice and loud for those. And let's go ahead and begin uh, this morning with our first hymn on uh, number 457.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children, and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enlighten our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. With a voice of singing, declare this with a shout of joy to the end of the earth. Hallelujah. The Lord has redeemed his servant Jacob. Hallelujah.
Let us pray. O oh God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guidance, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for this sixth Sunday of Easter is from Numbers chapter 21. From Mount Hor they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way, and the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt? to die in the wilderness. For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many of the people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten when he sees it shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading comes from the first chapter of James. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he's like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away, and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained from the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. According to St. John, the 16th chapter. In that day, Jesus said, You will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive that your joy may be full. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I will ask the Father on your behalf, 
For the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me, and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father, and have come into the world, and now I am leaving the world and going to the Father. His disciples said, Ah, now you are speaking plainly and not using figurative speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour is coming. Indeed, it has come when you will be scattered, each to his own home, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Christ. We confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You'll be seated with seeing our sermon hymn number 563.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. can't tell you how it makes me feel having more than just a couple people sitting here in church again. It's been very strange preaching to a cell phone, but, you know, even with people here, we're planning on keeping this streaming going. But the disciples felt a little strangeness as well, listening to Jesus speak this long section on his departure and the gift of the Holy Spirit that runs through several chapters here in John's Gospel, that he spoke to them on that Monday, Monday, Thursday evening. Most of the time, I don't think they fully comprehended what Jesus was telling them, but he told them what he thought they could handle. At the end, they, they seem to accept what Jesus has told them on, on faith, that Jesus has come from the Father and that he was returning to the Father. But I don't think they still fully understood what this meant because Jesus had not yet suffered and died on the cross, risen from the dead, from the tomb. He had not yet ascended into heaven and sent the Holy Spirit. The special name for this Sunday is Rogate from the Latin. They all have these special names. Rogate means pray, you all. That would maybe sound better if we were from Texas or something like that. But it is about prayer for everyone. And you can find prayer in the readings for today. Like when the Israelites complain about food and water like they did many times. God sent poisonous snakes among them as their punishment. And the people realized their sin and they begged Moses to intercede to God for them. Jesus is a much greater intermediary for us because he came himself to reconcile this schism that sin created between God and mankind. He defeated the old serpent, Satan, crushing his power from the throne of his cross. The last verse of John chapter 16, the last verse of our gospel reading today, talks about how Jesus has overcome or gained the victory over the world. Even though he hasn't suffered and died on the cross at that time. But look again at the beginning of our gospel reading for today again. Jesus has something very important to say when he says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whenever Jesus says those words, we know something important is coming right after that. Our first verse today, Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give to you. In our prayers, we usually address God the Father for our needs. We can give him praise and thanks for what he's already done for us, for all of his blessings. And then we have some petition, usually, that we send up to our Father, some urgent need of ours. And then, how do we end our prayer? Usually we conclude them by saying that we've come to the Father in the first place in the name of his Son, Jesus. Because Jesus has opened the way to God for us. Praying in Jesus' name isn't literally ending every prayer literally with, in Jesus' name I pray. Although we do that a lot, what does that mean? To pray in Jesus' name. We're confident that we can approach God since Jesus, the Son, has made it possible for us to go directly to the Father because he has removed all sin from us. He's removed that barrier that separates us from God, our sin. Sure, the Israelites used Moses They'd seen the fire and heard the thunder on the mountain when God spoke to them. They knew they were unworthy to come before God. 
and they'd even been warned not to touch the mountain or they would die. None of us is worthy by our own merit or deeds to appear before God or ask Him for anything. We are sinners, and God is holy. But all that has been changed by Jesus humbly coming as a man and suffering and dying for our sins. We've been reconciled to God. We can come to Him directly and confidently with our prayers and petitions, knowing that He hears us because He's commanded us to pray to Him. And He graciously offers to answer our prayers for Jesus' sake. This is what Jesus has been preparing the disciples for. His suffering, death, and resurrection. On our own, we are sinners condemned to hell. We don't deserve to have a holy God look at us or hear our prayers. But Jesus here invites us to pray to the Father. He invites us to come with our prayers because he earnestly desires to save sinners, to bring them safely into heaven as a shepherd gathers his sheep into the fold. He opens the prayer lines for all people as he suffers and dies for the sins of the world. Jesus had already taught the disciples how to pray. Our Father, Jesus, our brother, has accomplished for us the very things that we need. Victory over sin, death, Satan, our sinful flesh, and the world that wants to lead us astray from God and into eternal death and hell. He does this as he leaves the world for a little while and goes to the Father, that in a little while again, he will bring us to him for all eternity. The other special thing about Rogate Sunday is that in the prayers, there were special petitions for the fields. Fields that had been planted, that they would mature and ripen, that there would be a fruitful harvest that year. Certainly we pray that again this year for a bountiful harvest this fall, for the sake of the farmers who make their living doing this, and for us, that we would have plenty to eat. Jesus taught the disciples to pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into the fields that were ripe and ready to be harvested. While they were looking at fields of grain, Jesus had in mind this harvest of souls for the Lord. There are still plenty of people in our world who live and work around us who still need to hear and believe the good news about Jesus Christ so that they are saved from sin and eternal condemnation in hell. This isn't just the pastor's job. Jesus didn't just want the 12 disciples working in God's kingdom. This is something that we all we are the ones who know what's going on in our neighbor's life. If they've lost their job, if a loved one has died, if they're behind on paying their bills, we can tell them about the great things that Jesus has accomplished for all sinners and help them then in whatever ways we can. The troubles and the tribulations of this world will always be around us. There will be literal storms in our life that will cause damage to our home. There will be accidents where people will be injured, and there are evil people around us in this world. But God himself is greater than all these things. No matter how long suffering lasts on the earth, God is greater. 
And he has sent his son to rescue this lost world, to rescue us from sin and death. You know when most people end up praying to God? When life has brought them down to their lowest point they've been. When we're down, all we can do is cry out to God for rescue and for salvation. He knows what's best for us and how to answer our prayers. But what if people don't think God is listening? What if they've cried out and don't think God has heard them? If the world doesn't think he's given them the answer they want, well then the world thinks God must not be powerful. We know different. We know he's always ready and waiting to hear our prayers and to give us what we need. We also know he uses us to share the good news of salvation to the world around us. We know we shouldn't just pray when things are going well or when we're in church. We know we should pray at all times. When we get up in the morning, when we go to bed at night, at meals, several times during the day. Praying should be as effortless as taking a breath. God wants us to come to him in prayer. And he promises to answer. That's why Jesus tells the disciples to ask the Father. And he will give it to you. Pray for your forgiveness. Pray for the peace of this world. Pray for your family. Pray for your neighbors. As we continue to see this world around us change and evolve. But most of all, pray that many more would hear the good news. The good news about Jesus and his life, his death, his resurrection. And that they would believe in their hearts that this message, the salvation is also for them. And believing that they might be saved for all eternity. Amen. Now may the peace that passes all our human understanding keep our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. We stand for our prayers. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. Heavenly Father, you tenderly invite us to bring our petitions before you, and you promise to hear us. Keep us, we pray, steadfast in the faith, that we might ever cling to your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who has overcome the world for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you for raising up faithful pastors among us to care for your holy flock. Fill them with your spirit, that they would never tire of preaching Christ and him crucified for the salvation of all who hear and believe. Lord, in your mercy, Holy Father, we remember with thankfulness the millions of Americans who give so generously of their life and labor in times of national conflict, particularly the family members of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen. We are grateful for the devotion and sacrifices of military families. Grant us the resources and willing hearts to support them. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty Father, keep this nation under your care and bless the leaders of our land, especially Donald, our president, Laura, our governor. Preserve us in safety, liberty, and livelihood. Heal our divisions, that we may be a people at peace among ourselves and a blessing to the other nations of the earth. Give us grateful hearts for the freedom we enjoy and for the men and women who have given their lives to keep us free. 
We ask you also to preserve all who work in emergency and medical fields. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, extend your compassionate and caring hand toward all who suffer tribulation in this sinful world. Or sick or suffering in any way, especially Krista Wright, Raymond Smith, and Betty Bryan. Restore them to health or give them the strength and perseverance to endure. Above all, comfort them in the sure and certain knowledge that their Redeemer lives, and that they have the promise of eternal life through Him. Lord, in Your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we give You thanks for receiving all those who've gone to their heavenly reward before us, and now rest from their labors, especially Larry Tears' mother, Dorothy. Keep us with them in that same faith, that together with them we may receive the promised inheritance of your eternal kingdom, as fellow heirs with your Son, when he returns in glory on the last day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, Bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and 